I'm Dina Elsafar. Uh, my name is Tim Moore. And we are with the band Salam. I was born in Chicago. My father is from Baghdad, Iraq, and my mother is American. So I have sort of a, the immigrant background as well as a, a pretty well-established family history in this country. I was actually born here in Bloomington, Indiana, and I've lived all over the Midwest, uh, but I'm an American. I was brought up with a uh, quite a variety of religious um, influences. My father is a Muslim. Uh, my mother is Protestant. Um, they sent me to a Lutheran school. And in fact, the Lutheran school is where I started playing music because it was a, of great importance. They had us singing in choir and playing in orchestra. And my first performance experiences were in a church. Music is very spiritual and it's, it's informed by all the religions, um, especially this kind of music is informed by all the religions from that part of the world. I guess in, in, in a way, music is my religion. We met playing music. We were in two different bands and we were giving live performances on the radio. And she was coming out of the radio studio while I was going in and that's when we first met. We always describe our music as the music of the Middle East. And uh, there's a lot of music from the Middle East. There's a wide range of styles, and we obviously don't cover them all, but we try to cover a range. Uh, we do mostly Egyptian, Iraqi, some Lebanese, dabble in a few different things. Certainly Muslim people have come to our shows, but we also have a pretty good American following of people that are just either music lovers or they're interested in a cultural experience. Um, what I love about our audiences is seeing the diversity. And it makes me feel like, that, like we're reaching our goals, which is bringing people together. And I think when it comes to the Middle East, that if you're Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, or Baha'i, or whatever your religion is, that you identify with that music. Um, and so it's been enjoyable for us to, to facilitate gatherings where there's a diverse uh, audience like that. Uh, I'm playing a, a doom beck, what I call a doom beck. These kind of drums have, uh, they're prevalent all over the Middle East and uh, in some countries they call this darbuka, derbeki, table. Uh, in Iraq they call it dumbug. And it's just a, it's a goblet shaped drum and with a head on it. Traditionally it would have been a ceramic drum with, a, with maybe a fish skin or a goat skin head. It's got two main sounds. It's got a low sound called doom middle of the drum and a high sound called tech out near the edge and the rhythms are built out of these. And you can get other sounds uh, like This instrument is the Joza. It was made in Iraq. And this type of instrument goes back over a thousand years. And if you look geographically and through history, you can see that before the violin family came about, people were playing um, instruments similar to violin, but on the knee. The Joza is made with a coconut shell. And um, it ha makes a great resonator. Um, the bow, is a bit shorter than a violin bow, but it also has horse hair. And instead of tightening it like you see on a modern violin, you actually have to add the tension while you're playing. And it has four strings tuned in fourths. I heard Middle Eastern music growing up all my life. I never paid any attention to it. 
um, I was learning classical music starting at age six and I'd hear the Arabic music and didn't really understand it at all and then uh, I went to Baghdad with my father and brought my instrument so I could practice and everybody saw my my viola they said okay let's hear something and I'd play Bach and was, you know they liked it but then they they were playing me tapes and asking if I could play what I heard and I said sure I'll play along with those and then it was uh, the, the response was really enthusiastic and I I just started really paying attention to the music and and I just got under my skin I loved it so much that ever since then I've been learning to play it I always felt like it was in my blood too like it, it just really came to me maybe from hearing it all my life or maybe just from my heritage Well, the thing about music is there's there's no there's no real boundaries or borders that cut off and say, okay, well, this music stops here and this other kind of music starts here. It's all influenced by its neighbors. Even the Iraqi music that we've spent so much time studying, we hear the Persian influence, the Turkish influence, the Kurdish influence. You can almost tell like which part of Iraq the music comes from by what influence of the neighbors that you're hearing in it. I feel like defending Islam, even if I'm not practicing it in a way that you would say a typical Muslim does. I went to a local bookstore four or five years ago when it was a time when Ramadan was in December. They have this thing in the bookstore, Christmas books for children and Hanukkah books for children. And there was no Ramadan or anything like that, so I made a Ramadan section. <laughs> I grabbed the children's books and I put them right there. And I have this thing, I, I think I just want uh, Muslims to, to be part of this society. And I, I definitely see that there's a lot of acceptance in our, in our town and in this country. I've always wanted to just kind of even the playing field. The Middle East has a history that goes back thousands of years. And the music reflects that. In a way, this music of the Middle East kind of reminds us all that um, our connections go back deeper than just religion, that religion can be part of that, but that music kind of, I believe it takes us to a higher level. We get to play music. We get to represent one of the beautiful parts of the culture and we get to just focus on that. It's really great when we give a performance and um, you can see a diverse range of people in the audience. There might be Muslims and Jews and Christians and especially if they're all from that part of the world, they all get up and sing along and clap along and they all are familiar with the music and they love it and it just it brings people together. Support for Voices and Visions comes from the Social Science Research Council, the SSRC, leading innovation in the social sciences and educating the next generation of social science researchers.